I know miracles can happen. A father reaching out to the community. Please pray for us. As his son, a fellow police officer, struggles to survive. We want people to be cautiously optimistic. And the mother and son now arrested in a shooting. His main response was, was curiosity. A town council president arrested and why the FBI is now involved. Dario on his lap. How tonight's NASCAR race could be the last for the Indy 500 team. Good evening. Officer Jason Fishburne is now in guarded condition tonight. More than 24 hours after Metro Police say he was shot by a murder suspect. And tonight we've learned that investigators believe that suspect had family help in that burglary homicide, including his mother. A 69-year-old man was beaten to death in his Newton Avenue home and just blocks away, Officer Fishburne was shot trying to arrest his accused killer. The Night Beach David McAnally joins us live tonight from Metro Police Headquarters with our top story at 11. David? Scott, the new information comes from an affidavit released by the prosecutor's office today. It says that uh, a tipster came forward and gave police information that he recently overheard. When Officer Fishburne was shot on Euclid, he was chasing a suspect whose crimes were a family affair. Court papers say the officer's accused shooter, 36-year-old Brian Reese, also killed 69-year-old Clifford Haddocks last Sunday. And a witness now says right before that murder, she was with Brian Reese's father, Paul, when Brian called him by cell phone. And they stood outside Clifford Haddock's house and watched as Brian Reese broke down the victim's door and shot Haddocks. She says Paul Reese, a registered violent offender once convicted of voluntary manslaughter, led her away from the crime scene. They met up with Brian Reese later. She calls father and son that night nervous, suspicious, panicked. And Reese's mother, Barbara, is charged with resisting arrest. She drove Brian Reese Thursday night as he tried to escape police. She told police her son admitted he was on the run. We're asking for each and every one of you to continue praying for him. Officer Jason Fishburne's father, Dennis, an IMPD sergeant, outside the hospital with other members of the law enforcement family. We hope that he will get home. We hope that he will get well. And I'm a firm believer in the power of prayer. Our goal right now is to keep him quiet and keep him stable. Surgeons say most with brain wounds like Officer Fishburne's don't make it, but... We want people to be cautiously optimistic, but we don't want to give people false hope. Right. Even with that, though, he has several things on his side, like you said, one of which is his age. He's young and he is healthy. The mayor kept watch at Wishard, too. And when you see a guy like Jason Fishburne put it all out there for all of us, it's, it's very, very meaningful, and I hope everybody understands that. Earlier today, the surgeon said that that injury was to the left side of the officer's brain. It did not involve the entire brain, and that was also a plus in this case, they say. Officer Fishburne remains in that drug-induced coma. There is a fund set up for Officer Fishburne and his family. It is at the Professional Police Officers Credit Union, 1502 East Washington Street. Reporting live at police headquarters, David McAnally, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. All right, David, thank you. A prayer vigil for Officer Fishburne is planned for tomorrow at 4 o'clock at the old YMCA building. That's across from Wishard at 10th and Indiana. Then a blood drive in his name will be held earlier in the day from 8 a.m. till noon at the Indiana Regional Blood Center. That's in the 3400 block of North Meridian Street. In other news tonight, a 16-year-old is now in custody tonight for the murder of a Good Samaritan who tried to stop a robbery. Police arrested Dominique Staten on charges of murder and robbery. Investigators say he shot and killed 72-year-old Mario Gonzalez Tello on June 30th in the parking lot of a restaurant in the 5000 block of West 38th Street. They believe Tello was shot after he pulled his own gun trying to stop the team from stealing a friend's purse. And that homicide on 38th Street is one of 12 that Metro Police have investigated since June 30th. At this point, there have been a total of 63 homicides this year. Police have now made 51 arrests, and those arrests have solved 47 of those homicides. The leader of an area town council now faces child porn charges tonight. Detectives in Johnson County discovered some disturbing images on the computer of Trafalgar's town council president. Our night beat reporter Jenny Runovich tells us how they found those images and the explanation he gave police. The president of Trafalgar's town council, a longtime firefighter, a community leader, now linked to child pornography. Police arrested 73-year-old Max Knapp after finding more than 70 images of child porn on his PC. Pictures and videos of children as young as two years old downloaded, detectives say, from a file-sharing website for over a year. Depicting children under the age of 16 
um, and some much, much, much younger engaged in sexual activity, either with an adult or with another teen or with with themselves. Investigators picked up on the case when Knapp took his computer to a local repair shop. The repairman discovered questionable images on the hard drive and called police. When somebody steps forward and does the right thing, that's, uh, that's absolutely great to us. Knapp, now out on bond, wouldn't comment to Eyewitness News, but to detectives. He admitted to me uh, what he had done and admitted to me the, uh, the images and the files that he downloaded. Court papers show Knapp expressed remorse, said I knew it was wrong, and told police I'm not a pedophile. His explanation for the downloads? His main response was, was curiosity. It's disturbing, you know, to think that that's going on that close to you. Knapp's arrest, a shock for neighbors who knew him as a well-respected leader. Well, I mean, the most concerning thing is, is that somebody could be involved in something like that this close to, to where I live and where my kids play. Police say none of the images were of local children. All were downloaded online. They'll now be shared with the FBI. And as part of its Innocent Images program, the FBI will catalog and investigate the images that they found on Knapp's computer in hopes of tracking them down and figuring out where those children came from. In the meantime, Knapp, on Tuesday or on Monday, prosecutors will formally charge him with two counts of possessing child pornography. Reporting live, Jenny Runovich, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. The Hoosier Lottery is now making a very big change to the way it sells scratch-off tickets. Our partners at the Indianapolis Star tell us tonight that the lottery has told retailers to immediately pull tickets from games once the top prizes are gone. This change comes after a Carmel man filed a class action suit after he and three friends spent more than $50,000 on scratch off tickets. He says the lottery advertised seven tickets worth a quarter million dollars, then lowered the odds after they bought nearly 5,500 tickets. Speaking of tickets, free tickets are available to the public Monday for an open house at Lucas Oil Stadium. You can pick those free tickets up beginning 10 a.m. Monday from Ticketmaster or the box office at Conseco Fieldhouse. During that open house, which takes place August 16th, you can walk out on the field and tour non-public areas like the suites and locker rooms. While those tickets are free, each person is limited to eight. Record flooding from last month's storms may force a local police department to permanently move. Rising water caused the Franklin Police Department to move out of its 10-year-old station. Five feet of water also damaged about a dozen police vehicles. The department moved to a warehouse that the city is now considered buying and then remodeling as a permanent home. That old police station could be then turned into an office for the city's planning department. Well, a dog in Hamilton County has a new leash on life thanks to the help of hundreds of people who helped save his life. In fact, many people want to adopt him. But our Night Bee reporter Emily Alonecker tells us there were hundreds more like him who are waiting to get the very same chance. There he is. Sparky. He's just an all-around good guy. Oh, could be wrong. To look at Sparky the Lhasa Apso now, you'd never know a month ago. The folks at the Hamilton County Humane Society didn't know if the then stray had a chance. He was in bad shape. He, uh, he came in and it honestly looked like one of his eyes was on the side of his head. Turns out Sparky had a skull fracture causing an infection that spread to his brain and then his eye. From a blow to the head that was caused by someone who probably hit him with something, a hard object, a bat. When word of Sparky's plight spread, hundreds responded with money to save his life. Now Sparky has a new leash on life. Sparky's living with a foster family until he's ready for adoption. He's just a character. That's all there is to it. And dozens want this little character for their own. So many, Sparky's foster family admits, it'll be hard to let him go. Your heart gets involved, doesn't you know. it? Yeah, it does. While Sparky's story is about to have a happy ending, there are hundreds of other animals like Dane here who have been waiting months for someone to foster or adopt them. We have probably close to 350 animals in this shelter right now. Most of them haven't been lucky enough to get the FaceTime Sparky has, but many of these faces, like this guy named Bear, have their own sad stories. I have some animals who've been waiting for a home for a year. Right now, the shelter is completely full, and shelter officials say something's got to give. We need the community to come out here and help us. Shelter officials desperately need people to adopt or foster some of these cats and dogs. We're doing what we have to do to be able to house these animals and give them their best chance for a second chance. A second chance, something Sparky knows all about, something these animals are waiting to get. Information on adopting or fostering these animals can be found at the Hamilton County Humane Society website. For a link to that site, go to our website, WTHR.com, and click on Hot Topics. Emily Longnecker, Channel 13 Eyewitness News.
the man who won gas for life and why he turned it down. And the new iPhone hang up that had customers leaving stores without service. Also tonight, the Indy 500 champion now struggling with NASCAR. Is this the end of the road? More thunderstorms on X Vision radar. They're headed our way. That could mean a stormy weekend. Tonight, Jay's all new with a dark night. You're watching Indiana's News Leader with John Sayer and Andrea Moorhead. Eyewitness News Nightbeat continues now. A frightening encounter for a Virginia cab driver attacked by a passenger. A taxi security camera catches the suspect, reached to the front, and stabbed the man as he drove on a street in Norfolk, Virginia. After a struggle, the suspect jumped out of the cab with the driver's cash and then ran away. Mueller, but you and also a rabbit fox attacks a police officer as she tries to taser the animal. It all happened in a neighborhood in Norfolk, Virginia as well. And this was also caught on camera, mounted on the officer's taser. The officer was re responding to a complaint by a woman that the fox attacked her three dogs. The fox scratched the officer, who then had to get rabies shots. Well, the death of two infants in Texas is now raising more questions about a common drug used by hospitals across the country. Yeah, newborn twins are dead tonight. 14 more babies are in critical but stable condition after getting an overdose of the blood thinning drug heparin at a hospital in Corpus Christi. The administrators there are now investigating. We do not know at this time what, if any, role the higher than expected concentration of heparin played in this baby's death. You may remember a similar incident here in Indianapolis a couple of years ago brought light to a possible packing problem with heparin. Five babies were given overdoses of that drug at Methodist Hospital. Three of those babies died. Actor Dennis Quaid filed a lawsuit against the manufacturer of heparin after an overdose of the drug nearly killed his twin newborns last November. Well, the high gas prices are now hurting wallets, but possibly saving lives on the highway. Researchers at the University of Alabama found as gas prices go up, auto deaths actually decline. Their study shows every 10% increase in gas prices resulted in a 2.3% decline in auto deaths. The decline was percentage for teenage drivers. That could result in more than 12,000 lives saved each and every year. But researchers say the number could be offset as drivers shift to smaller, lighter cars and motorcycles which can be more dangerous. And listen to this story. A Florida man who hardly ever drives has won free gas for life. The game Summer Cash is similar to a raffle. One of its prizes, free gasoline for life. Well, Bob Heron is one of five people who won that prize in Wednesday night's drawing. But the 70-year-old decided to take the cash option because he only drives a few miles a day to take his wife to work. He'll get 39000 bucks, but doesn't know how he'll spend it. Well, it's according to what the wife wants to spend it on. She's the boss. Uh, she gets to decide. Summer gas will run for seven more weeks. Another four people will win that top prize of free gas for life. Smart man. Well, Senator Barack Obama's presidential campaign is now opening six new offices across the state of Indiana. Offices in Evansville, Fishers, Fort Wayne, Muncie, and South Bend will open tomorrow. And an office in Bloomington down south will open on Monday. Obama also opened an office at the state Democratic Party headquarters, and it plans to add at least 20 regional offices around the state in the coming weeks. And Republican presidential candidate John McCain spent the day in Wisconsin holding a town hall on women's economic issues. McCain told the audience he has a record of supporting equal pay for women. His campaign also put out a new ad today aimed at Hispanic voters who could tip the balance in some swing states. The head of the FCC is tonight recommending a punishment for the nation's largest cable company over its internet service. Comcast is accused of not guaranteeing customers open access to the internet by limiting the amount of data that customers can download. The FCC will vote next month on what action it may take against the company. A spokeswoman for Comcast says tonight the complaint filed against the company is not true and that any FCC action is not enforceable. Well, the launch of the new faster iPhone didn't go as well as Apple and AT&T would have liked. It went on sale at 8 o'clock this morning. Take a look at these long lines of people. This is at the AT&T store on 96th Street in Fishers. But iTunes servers became overwhelmed by the high demand today, and that kept many iPhones from being fully activated in the stores. After 30-minute waits, buyers were told, go home and perform the last step on their own computers. Despite the problems today, some new iPhone customers say they're buying now for one big reason.
The last launch was just too expensive for me. This one is more in my price range. Better internet features, being able to um, you know, stay connected uh, a little bit better. The iTunes server slowdown also caused some problems for owners of the old iPhone model. The new software update released this morning requires users to reactivate through iTunes. Jude Redfield has been designated a certified broadcast meteorologist from the AMS and is certified by the National Weather Association. Earlier tonight, a few showers and thunderstorms out there across the state. Right now, nothing really going on. In the overnight, mainly dry conditions. That all changes as we head into Saturday morning when we start to bring in a few showers and thunderstorms. Watching right now, thunderstorms in Illinois. And as they move off to the east, it's easy to see to the naked eye that many of these are dissipating in coverage. I still can't completely rule out a couple thunderstorms in the overnight, but by far the best chance arrives as we head into Saturday, especially for Saturday afternoon and Saturday evening all courtesy of this cold front, which is going to snake through Iowa, eventually through Illinois, and then it's going to cross through our state late tomorrow night. But the big thunderstorms, without a doubt, up near this spinning low pressure, all sorts of tornadic thunderstorms tonight. This low is not going to move down to the south and east. This low is headed up into Canada, so the big time severe weather, at least with the spinning thunderstorms, will be to the north tomorrow. We're talking about maybe some straight line wind damage and all sorts of heavy rain. If we get the thunderstorms to go, I think maybe a couple inches of rain will be a possibility across portions of central Indiana, so keep that in mind. Tonight, down to around 71, another steamy overnight. South winds 5 to 12 miles per hour. A mix of sun and clouds on our Saturday. It's not going to rain all day, but some of that rain will be heavy at times. We should have an average high across the state around 85. Spots that see a little more in the way of sunshine, getting closer to 88 or 89 degrees. It's going to be a humid beginning to the weekend. We've got that steamy flow coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. This cold front bringing in the drier, cooler air from Canada, where everything mashes up, is going to be right across our state. So. On our Saturday, that's when we bring in about a 70 or 80 percent chance for showers and thunderstorms. By Sunday, everything slowly dropping down to the south and east. Skies clear out by Sunday afternoon, and things are looking really nice for the second half of the weekend. Slight risk, a couple of those thunderstorms tomorrow will reach severe limits. Nicole's in early tomorrow morning to give you the latest update on that. But once the front clears the state, we say so long, July muggies. Here comes a nice little July comfort zone dropping down for Sunday afternoon. And by Monday, high temperatures in some spots might not even hit 80 degrees, believe it or not. But it's going to be a steamy beginning. 85 tomorrow. It's going to feel even hotter when you factor in all the humidity. Sunday, 83. Clouds moving out. Monday, 60 and 79. Many spots Tuesday morning down into the 50s. Have a terrific weekend. And thanks, Jude. You know, former Indy 500 champion Dario Franchitti, he's not going down without a fight. Franchitti wants to prove he can make it in NASCAR, but a lack of sponsorship caused him to lose his ride in the Sprint Cup Series. However, Dario was racing in the Nationwide Series tonight at Chicagoland, and he discussed his future with our guy, Rich Nye. How's it going out there, Rich? Hey, Henry, welcome to Victory Lane, where Kyle Busch celebrated a win tonight in the first ever night race at Chicago Land Speedway. Tony Stewart started second, but had to settle for ninth after he had a shift error right at the start of the race and sort of cost him in tonight's race. Dario Franchini, he started sixth in the nationwide race tonight. This was his first time back at the track since owner Chip Ganassi shut down Dario's Sprint Cup team because of a lack of sponsorship. Dario dropped back quickly tonight, finished 26th, I talked with last year's Indy 500 and IndyCar season champion after the race tonight. So when do we see you in a car again and where do we see you in a car again? It's a good question. That's a big question right now. Um, I'm going back to, to Scotland um, Sunday. I'm going to Lime Rock tomorrow to watch my brother in the LMS race. Um, and then back to Scotland. I'll spend a little time there, think about it, see what I want to do. You met with Chip today. Can you tell us anything about that meeting? <laughs> nah, well, I was interrupted because of qualifying. That was kind of tough. Um, but he talked with my my uh, my managers throughout the the time when I was qualifying, and um, I'm going to go back talk to them, see what was discussed, and uh, talk to Chip at some point and see where we go from here. Do you see options racing for Chip the rest of this year? I think it's a possibility. So a possibility, but no certainty in Dario's racing future. Tomorrow is the Sprint Cup race here at Chicagoland Speedway. Kyle Busch, tonight's winner, on the pole tomorrow after rain washed out qualifying. He starts on the pole as the series leader right now. Henry, we'll see you tomorrow on Eyewitness News at 6. Excellent job out there, Rich. We'll see you tomorrow, bud. Keep it up.
Also over to IndyCar where Elio Castroneves has the pole in the first Firestone, that is, Indy 200 tomorrow. The race is scheduled for 8 o'clock in the night in Nashville. Elio was impressive in qualifying. He's the only driver to go over 204 miles per hour today. He's looking for his first win of the season, but he's second in the point standings behind Scott Dixon. And what about Danica Patrick? She starts outside row one at 203.33 miles per hour. There's a lot of places, of course, that you want to qualify well, which is the only reason, which is why we work on it. But here it's extremely difficult. You really, you know, it's an oval, so you got to get a good run on somebody, but it's really tough because it's a one groove track. So starting up front's going to pay off. You know, those guys made sure that everything was in great conditions. And uh, wow, what a, what a great four laps. You know, um, I still like the old, the old qualifying, but anyway, it was finally we were able to make it happen. And uh, I'm, I'm extremely happy for the team. Stick with us. More information on your favorite quarterback. Peyton Manning was hanging out with sports director Dave Calabro in New Orleans and will tell you why the Manning brothers were encouraging people to chow down on the cookies. Those stories are next in sports. Welcome back. Peyton Manning and his little brother Eli were running the first ever Oreo Double Stuff Racing League competition today. Hey, it looks like it's all a joke, but it's a lot of fun and $10,000 were at stake. That's what the winner will get. By the way, sports director Dave Calabro has an excellent interview coming up Monday night on the Night Beat. You don't want to miss that interview. Speaking of football, Brett Favre having a tough time making up his mind. Three years remaining on his contract with the Packers, but remember, he retired. Now he's asking for an unconditional release, which means he wants back in, but he wants to play for another team. Stick with us. We'll be right back. At Turkey Hill, we take pride in our ice cream, our fresh dairy ingredients, and recipes that have served us for over 75 years. But every once in a while, we like to introduce something new. Smooth and tangy Venice ice and creamy vanilla soft serve blending together. Turkey Hill Duetto, too delicious in cherry, lemon, raspberry, and mango. And introducing two new flavors, root beer float and creamy chocolate coconut. Race in tomorrow's edition of the Indianapolis Star. Well, former Indianapolis Mayor William Hudnett said at a gathering of housing officials. Plus, how to add a gazebo or pergola to your backyard and what a new location will mean for the Indianapolis Opera. It's all on tomorrow's Indianapolis Star. And a new weather term, July muggies. Ooh. That's right. We had it today, <laughs> definitely. Tomorrow it's going to feel muggy, too, but we do have a better chance for showers and storms. Maybe a couple big boomers tomorrow, but then a really nice end of the weekend, much cooler, 83 and not nearly as muggy. All right, Thomas, stay safe and yeah. cool. Thanks for watching, everybody. We appreciate the it. The weekend is here. Our news continues on WTHR.com. Good night. There's never been a better time to drive a Ford.